Hello and welcome to Nana's Crafty Home. My name is Tanya. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to read a graph in order to complete a corner to corner graph GAN. I'm going to show you two ways uh, to read instructions. One is going to be with the graph itself and one is with the written row by row instructions. Today I am using the butterfly corner to corner graph that is uh, the first square in my Easter blanket crochet along that you can find as a free pattern on my website. So if you are doing this for the first time and you're following along with that uh, blanket crochet along, this is going to help you uh, read those instructions. I do have several other videos about corner to corner, uh, all the way back to the basics on how to complete the stitch. Um, and so that way you'll be able to build on that knowledge and uh, become a master at corner to corner. Uh, we're going to start out here with the graph itself. So as you can see here, I have a full color graph. Um, I have the butterfly laid out here inside that graph and around the outside edges you see all of these numbers. What do those numbers mean? So basically, uh, we see here we've got a 1 and a 1 here and then a two and a two, a three and a three. And we keep going up all the way here to this corner and then they start going up until we get to 39. So these are row numbers. And so that means we're starting out in this corner for row one. And this is telling me that I have one white block for row one. And of course with corner to corner, since you're already familiar with it, you know that uh, we build on corner to corner diagonally. So we're going out this way and we are adding one block. Every time we do an increase row, we are adding one block for every row that we work. So row one will be one block, row two is two blocks, row three is three blocks and so on until we get to where we begin decreasing to close our square. So when you are reading these graphs and you're starting out, you know row one is one white block. These blocks all have the corresponding color and you would just crochet that block that color. So then we move on to row two and we have two white blocks because they're diagonal to each other. So these are the blocks that you are making on row two. So then when we move on to row three, we see we do one white block, then we move on to the pink block, and then we have a white block. Then we move on to row four, we have a white block, two pinks, and a white. We move on to row five, we have two whites, two pinks, and one white. We are going back and forth following the grid of uh, my graph here. Row one is typically in most patterns and all of my patterns that I've done, the first row is the wrong side of your work. So I've done a little bit of a sample here so you can see what I'm talking about. This is row one and row two that I've completed. And you can see here, this is block one for row one. And this is the front side of my double crochet and this is the back side of that double crochet cluster. When I say that row one is the wrong side, that means this side, which is the front side of my double crochet, is the back side of my work. So I know that this is the right side of my work. If I know that this is the right side of my work, I can lay this down here and I can see that I started row two, because this is the front side of my double crochet blocks. This is row two started up here and I finished down here. So row three, will increase out this direction and then move up. When I start row four, I'll be up here and I'll come down. So you can just kind of follow the grid 
in that way. You can always, if you get confused, where am I in my graph, layer piece down, and then figure out which is the right side, which is the wrong side, lay it next to your graph, and you're going to be able to figure out exactly where you are in it. A lot of people like to use rulers in order to keep track of where they are in their pattern. You can keep track manually with a pen or pencil in a couple of different ways. Some people just cross off the one when they finish it, cross off the two here when they finish it, and then they just follow the pattern inside that graph. Some people like to take that ruler and cross off the blocks as they do them. So when they've completed row one, they go through here and block off row one. When they've completed row two, they come through and they block off row two. Once they've completed row three, So row three is here, and so on. So then I can keep track really easily. This would be row four, and uh, I haven't completed those blocks. You can also, as I said, you can just cross off your rows if you're more comfortable with that, and then leaving this blank inside. Whatever works for you to keep track of where you are in your pattern is fine. So as we're moving along, and of course, we're continuing on, all of these rows would be an increase until we get to the corner. So when we get to this corner, what that tells me in my pattern is I'm going to start decreasing on row 20 here and row 20 up here. Because of course, in corner to corner, you do not have to do a standard square. You can make rectangles with this if you're making a long scarf. You could start decreasing down here, but continue increasing up. Um, but in my pattern, this is a standard square, so you begin decreasing on both ends on row 20 at the same time. So after you've completed row 20, you begin your decrease. So then you just continue decreasing all the way through until you just have the one block left for your last row 39. So you would just continue on working these blocks, these colors, as it shows in the graph, all the way through your pattern until it's completed. So that's how to read a color graph in order to complete a corner to corner. Now let's look at written instructions. And I generally, well, I always provide written row by row instructions with my patterns as well as the color graph because some people prefer, they're accustomed to written instructions, they want to follow written instructions, and that's perfectly fine. Whatever you want to do. I don't show it here, but in my instructions, I always tell people what technique what stitch are you going to be using for this corner to corner? And in mine, it's the double crochet. So this is worked in the double crochet. I tell you what these abbreviations stand for in those written instructions. So when you see a W, that means you're going to do a white block. So each one of these abbreviations stands for a color. Otherwise, you'd have really long row instructions. And essentially, it is just going to correspond with the color graph that we just looked at. It tells me for row one, which is, again, the wrong side of my work, I'm going to have one white block. So make one white block. Row two, I'm going to make two white blocks. Row three is one white, one pink, and then one white. And there are the instructions are given in the order that you do them. So your first block is white, you work two blocks of pink, and then you work one block of white. And you just continue moving on, doing exactly what it tells you in order for each row. Then when you get to patterns are going to be different. Some people just say, 
increase rows, you know, these are my increase rows. Uh, then they'll say begin decreasing or decrease rows. I typically show these as a corner and then I'll give instructions that this is where you would begin decreasing. If you were decreasing in two different parts of your pattern, so if I were making a rectangle, it may tell me to begin decreasing for row 20. And then you would do maybe on row 23, it would have another corner. And so it would tell you to begin decreasing on that side of your work at that point. So you may see this uh, in any pattern that uh, you're not making a perfect square. Anytime you're making a rectangle, you're going to begin decreasing in a rectangle at different points in your pattern. But for this one, I'm decreasing on row 20 both sides. So once you begin decreasing, of course, the instructions would stay the same. It's telling me on row 21, I'm gonna work one white, two pink, two yellow, two pink, one yellow, one pink, two black, four pink, one yellow, two pink, and one white. So you would just continue on through your pattern until you finish with row 39. And of course, as I discussed, those instructions correspond exactly with the graph that you're looking at. So row 34 is here. This is the block for row 34. We're working diagonally. So it says two white, then it says three pink, one, two, three, and then it says one white. So you can see <clears throat> that you can look at your color graph and look at those corresponding instructions and that will also help you uh, make, maintain where you are in the pattern. So essentially that's all there is to it, to reading instructions. It's fantastic because um, you can get complicated instructions because really you're making a complicated graph here. What really ends up being a very complex looking pattern, yet your instructions are on one page. So with this one graph, I can replicate this exact picture in crochet in any technique, the half double crochet, the double crochet, the triple crochet, and um, I don't have to have pages and pages of written instructions. And even with the written instructions, I have, as you can see here, every single row for this square is on one page. So that's, that's the fun thing about this stitch is you don't need complicated instructions in order to complete uh, a complicated color graph pattern. So I hope that you found this helpful today. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified whenever I post a new video. You can also follow me on social media. Reach out to me with any questions you might have. I'm happy to help in any way. I will be working on a new video in my Corner to Corner Basics series, and that one will show you how to use a free service in order to make your own customized corner to corner graphs and for free. So it's a great, uh, it's a great service. You're going to love it, especially if you love corner to corner as much as I do, and you'll be able to make your own personalized uh, custom graphs, um, blankets, scarves, whatever your heart desires. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. And I will see you soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.